and it's sad. But if you know you get stopped, you know with the, what grows in the ground, you go to jail. Here in South Carolina, you can get up to ten years for that. I mean, but they'll let somebody who molested twelve girls, you know, go out of prison. You know, like that's what I'm after. I'm after these pedophiles for real. Because that's what it, what's going on with these kids. And the problem is is they're big time. But we gotta well, form a mission. And that's my mission. Expect. Yeah, go ahead. That's my Sorry. mission is to help them. What's that? We were all talking at the same time. I apologize. Sometimes there's a delay, a two-second delay. Uh, I don't know why that is on these phones. They could be listening and want to uh, see what they we're listen all the time, <laughs> all the time. Not I mean, just on the phones. No, not just on the phones. Absolutely not. Yeah, you're 100% correct because I was sitting there talking to my uh, cousin about it the other day and – uh, you know, some weird stuff took place. So, like, yeah, I, I know, I know, definitely. You don't, you don't even need to be years. on the phone. Yeah, yep, it's been going like on satellite years. control. <clears throat> well, the more electronic devices and things like that, the more easier it is for them to uh, tap in. Access us, yep, yep. And I believe that I have a chip in my brain, and that chip is, you know, you know, if they if they have a way in, they have a way in, and that's how they can get through my, you know, obviously, it, it's it the megahertz, and and sometimes I'll be on the phone, and my ears will start ringing. What do you like, think that is? Uh, when I okay, well. Back in around two, it was in the middle of 2014. Me and a couple of friends were hanging out, and I do remember the night before I saw something that looked like the Star of David, and it would blink in and blink out, blink in and blink out, blink in and blink out, blink in, and I just watched it. I stared at it. Okay, now I've heard when you stare directly at uh, certain objects. And that could have been like just some E.T. from another dimension. And it was blinking in and out, and it was gone. And I looked to go see if it was moving behind it and gone, but then would pop right back up. And it was like the Star of David. It was crazy. It was it was nuts. So I don't know. I, I felt like I went home, and I had like a really bad splitting headache. And I didn't get migraines. Like, I stopped getting migraines. See, like, I grew out of that. Why all of a sudden did I grow out of that? But I had bad, bad nightmare. I mean, yeah, you know, my, my bad uh, migraines as a child. I mean, I have to look at all these options, you know, and then them forcing medications down my throat. They wanted to brainwash me because... You know, I'm the type of person that will speak for up for the children because I've, I've, I I I care about the kids. I want to see kids. At this point, they're going after this next generation. That's plain and simple. My daughter is four months, uh, almost five months, and she's already almost crawling. It's beautiful, and she's like babbling on. It's it's these kids are prophetic. And I believe that they're sent here. And it's like the energy I get off of her. Like, I can have a whole full-blown panic attack, right? And I will go and, and pick my daughter up. And all of a sudden, I, I feel completely like, wow. It's a, it, 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 it's like a high that I can't explain. You got re-energized. R- right, but it's every time. It's every yeah. it's every single time. That's because she has pure <clears throat> energy. She doesn't have to carry the negativity. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. But I well, mean, I had to go through hell and back. You know, it was like, and 
I don't I don't ever fear going there again. I'm not going to go because I'm not going to give in. You know, um, it's like sort of like you sign these contracts kind of in this. Sometimes people do that. And I thought it was cool to do it, and it wasn't cool. I ended up in a lot of crap, possessed, you know, uh, isolating because – you can't just talk to people when you're under possession like that you, because the things you say, like I was told things that I didn't even remember saying. So it's dangerous stuff. You know, paranormal investigating can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. That's true. That's true. Well, uh, I'm at any questions for Sean or Kimberly either. No, I, I, I fully agree with him. If you're going to mess with anything paranormal, you need to be prepared and you need to do your uh, research beforehand. You just don't run into a house and start uh, thinking you can uh, uh, exercise the house of evil spirits. Uh, you better check it out and you better get some good information. <laughs> you better do your own research before you learn about the house, and most good investigators know that, not to mention if you're really a psychic medium. And a lot of people claim these things, but they don't really say they're protected. And some are uh, from the Celtic, Irish, Irish uh, lore, and some people hate uh, Christian fascists, and some people hate Muslim fascists. And uh, some people hate Jewish fascists, but we're not fascists. But uh, I study uh, the spirit from all world religions. And I, my uh, internet church has always been about universal life, but I was brought up in America and in the South. And when we come to this place, this planet, and I'll talk about something uh, later uh, when we have a time for me to go into my little story on my dream tonight is uh, I've gone through the Christian belief. I was baptized as a baby, but they, they do in the uh, Baptist church when I was born in Monroe, Louisiana, they put little drops on your head, you know, where the little mm-hmm. white thing, they call it a christening, right? So I went through mm-hmm. that, and I grew up in the Baptist church, and it was first uh, Baptist, and then they were the southern uh, Christian, Southern Baptist, and so I got these uh-huh. little, little things, uh, and I really studied them. My mother got me great books with Jesus and all that, and hmm. you know, I was baptized, but I didn't. They wouldn't let me be baptized again when I wanted to be when I was older and singing with the choir at the church. But I had died in the second grade and uh, had hepatitis and lost all the uh, good blood and turned brown and uh, yellow and. My feces was dark yellow and then light yellow and white. So I had the liver completely shut down. So that's basically why I died in the St. Francis Hospital. And they uh, uh, apparently they brought up a, a dialysis machine, but we didn't know what those were in 57, right? They just made them or something. But they brought one up from New Orleans. So I think that's why I'm alive today is they did clean my blood. But uh, they were very new in 1957. I haven't done the research. I just know my own story. But uh, after that, I still, third to sixth grade, I went over to White Sands, New Mexico with my uncles, and I saw some beings in a spacecraft. Now, after I died, I would uh, couldn't walk or talk, and this is the first time I died. I've died several times in this lifetime. And uh, I feel like it's given me an inner understanding of what we think of a God and Jesus and beings in the other worlds, or some people call them gods and goddesses. But it just depends on who you talk to. Each individual has their own filters and their own perception. But I totally believe that a lot of us have programs, whether we call them pro- – in other words, we memorize. We memorize who we are that, uh, by some people that take you to church. Sunday school, so we memorize those, and then I was brought up with a Bible. I've got all kind of Bibles around here, and my family all studied King James, basically, but so they also study them in other languages, Greek, Latin, whatever, and the Bhagavad Gita, and the Sea Scrolls, and the Emerald Tablets, and 
lately, you know, all the things that people are studying, they're studying not just the Bible, but found out the deluge and the flood was many, many places in the world, not just in the Gutenberg or German created by King James Version, you know. And uh, in fact, Constantine had it done, and uh, there's all kind of stories out there. Yeah, I won't go into all the world religions, but Basically, they're all the same, and uh, even all those things we had with Sanskrit back to Samaria. But, you know, just listen to the different stories. But I was raised and programmed, and I'm proud of what I believe in, but I also realize there's a lot more to believe in. Now, how do you want to feel about it? It's up to you because some people hate people in America just because we believe in a God and a, and a Jesus or Christ or the Holy Trinity, or the get grace, but other people uh, hate Muslims. So there's a lot of hate going on, and it's supposed to be a love-hate relationship with something higher than yourself or the God in us. But I, I really hope that our group, uh, I call it our Ascension Age, now in time, because I got the word Ascension not from Earth. That came to me, uh, and I wasn't dead at the time. <laughs> That sounds funny because people that follow me as a uh, psychic medium uh, ministry, <laughs> which was – I was a songwriter first. My, I had a Christian music ministry, a bluegrass ministry <laughs> in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and uh, moved to uh, outside of Nashville, Beaver Dam, Kentucky. So I took my ministry up there and wrote songs and became a producer for Broadcast Music Incorporated and CMA, Country Music Association, CMA Awards stuff. And it was a really good time, folks, bluegrass and stuff. That was after I was grown. But uh, I still always had that feeling of inside, uh, the inside God. There's the outside God and the inside God. It's like saying you think with your brain or you think with your heart and your, your mind, gut, soul inside your heart. But, you know, it's just words. So with our group, we're going to not judge people, I hope, but uh, I may not use all the terms from all the churches, but I'll do my best to at least say, let's do unto others. And if we're not going to help people, please don't hurt them. So that's sort of what I'm doing for my ACO club. A mad, we're pretty open universal life, like do, you know, do unto others and do what thou wilt harm none, but love, you know, faith, hope, charity, and the greatest is love. A mad, how would you say it? We're going to be a good club because we're going to not point fingers. I don't know how to say that right. What, how would you say it? Well, everybody, everybody is. Uh, I mean, you you can't help but judge people to a certain extent. I mean, it's in our nature to do this, but you you don't smash people. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I mean, because uh, you do, exactly. you judge people by your own standards, and your standards and their standards may not necessarily be the same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially, especially when religion comes to it, because religion is one of the, I'll tell you what, I believe it's the foundation of prejudice, period. Regardless of the color of the skin, right? It's still what right, they right. It, it has to do with belief. You think it has to do with culture and traditions where they're born? Well, I, I, I don't know about traditions so much, but but beliefs. Uh, I mean, you have religions out there that believe it's okay to eat people, and then you have religions out there that it's okay to <laughs> marry yeah. a seven-year-old. Oh, man. So now you have to make it a judgment there. Yeah, Regardless if you want to or not. <laughs> wow. I've never really thought of it like that, but I'm sure you're right because there are people that eat. Yeah, it is true. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, we got E.T. down here doing it. You know? E.T.'s are doing it too. Well, I haven't seen an E.T. eat a person, but I haven't seen anybody eat a person. So I have to be up behind uh, about whether. Yeah, no, um, I remember seeing things like that. For sure. Well, I've not had nightmares. I've only had this one last night. I wouldn't call it a nightmare, uh, oh, but I asked thanks. you guys. 